Before we get to our piston ring installation, we're going to go ahead and put our bearings inside the rods themselves so that we're just making sure they're ready and on there. We don't forget about them, that kind of thing, before they go onto the crank. Now, if you notice the bearings themselves, these are Clevite. This is CB. 1663H, H being for their uh, heat treated material. And uh, just like you saw with the main bearings for the crank, these are not glossy and shiny like they were for the 349 build. That's because these have a higher uh, heat tolerance uh, associated with them. So all we're going to do is we're just going to pop the bottom cap off and then go ahead and set these in place. And we're just all we're doing, just like we did before, we're just matching up the little notch with the little grooves inside. And yes, you just saw me touch these with my bare fingers. It is absolutely okay to do that. You don't need to have the gloves on here. Why? Because these aren't going back for long-term storage. These are going to be lubed up and have oil put on there. So you could use your bare fingers. If you don't want to, that's fine, but there's nothing wrong with that. They're on there good. A lot of work on that, huh? So from the factory, yeah, these are on a little tight. So we're making sure that we are using the vise here, but as you can see, it is protected with the cloth there. Again, that's needed just so that we can break these bolts loose from the factory. And yeah, be ready for it because they are tight. Now, if you've seen our um, 349 stroker build, when we did the 318 to 349, you've seen us do this. So we're only going to catch some highlights here. Basically, what we're doing is we are putting the ring in front of the piston and driving it into each bore. We're verifying where it's currently at. Then we're going to our ring grinder, grinding it down a little bit, and then going through that same process over. So just making sure that the ring gap is where it needs to go. Because that ring gap is too small, it's not gonna have the right compression in there, not gonna have the right blow by and blow through. And uh, so each one is gonna get the same treatment. We're gonna have to do this a total of 16 times for both the uh, top compression ring and the uh, second ring as well. When it comes to the ring gaps, we have a basic chart that we're going to use for this. And um, this chart was supplied by the manufacturer. So 
we're using, uh, this is naturally aspirated, so based off of this, because we're going to be using uh, gasoline um, or race fuel for this, our basic calculation is for the top ring and the second ring to use the bore size times 0 0.0045 inches. All right, so then our total target will be 4.08, which is our bore size, times that recommended number, 0 0.0045, leaves us with um, 0 0.01836. So we're going to round down to about 0.18. And if there's a little bit of gap or a little extra wiggle room, we'll be fine with that. So again, we just hope simply set that top ring in, take our piston, slide it down part way through so that both the uh, ring and the piston are evenly set in that bore. Take our feeler gauge and make sure that we're good to go. All right, with this process here, it's going to take several times to get it right because we're only taking off a little bit at each time because as with anything else, it's easier to cut away metal than it is to add metal. And we don't want to be a spot where we're needing to add metal because that means we need to get another ring. Again, taking our gauge, sliding it in, and making sure that it rests flat. It goes in easy. It is time to go ahead and get our rings installed. And uh, as you saw, these were already, uh, the compression rings had already been trimmed down based off of the recommendations. So we're going to go ahead and start with the installation, starting with the oil rings, and then work up to the compression ring itself. And uh, this is a pretty simple process. You've seen this done before. If you saw the 349 build, you saw us work through this process. And pretty much the same mechanics apply here, just being really careful not to uh, mar up or mark up the sides of the pistons themselves and ensuring that each one goes where it needs to go. Again, the oil ring gets sandwiched in between two more solid rings. And essentially the oil rings acts as a kind of scraper from the uh, splashback up and down the uh, piston bore itself. Mm -hmm. Now something different on the alignment here, we're on the 349 build, you saw us put the compression rings on the same side with a slight angle from each other. This one is recommending that you don't do that process and you split them up 180 degrees apart from each other for the actual uh, ring gaps. Now the oil gap goes on the uh, approximately about the same side as your uh, top compression ring. You have a little bit of wiggle room there. This will be rechecked again when we put the piston in. Mm -hmm. If you didn't hear what Pop said, he said this will be checked again when you, we put the piston in. But we're just getting it close for now. Number two ring. Right, here goes the number two ring. Pretty easy. And the top compression ring. This is a little bit thicker. There we go. That takes care of number eight. Only seven more to go.